My name is Victor Overa. I'm a pastor here in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been pastoring now for probably about 16 years. Uh, I'm born and raised in East Los Angeles. I came from uh, a big family. I got 10 siblings. Uh, five boys and five girls, and we were brought up here in uh, Boyle Heights, which is right next to East Los Angeles, and uh, grew up here in the midst of the gangs and the drugs and uh, uh, poverty and the struggles that most people have with big families. Uh, so... Uh, I grew up, uh, you know, going to school like everyone else and getting involved at a young age, uh, about the age of 13. I I joined a gang here in the in the neighborhood and stood there for a, a few years until we moved out of the area. I moved to a place called East LA on the farther side of East Los Angeles. And... Uh, Grew up over there, got also started getting involved in in drugs, started off with marijuana, you know, just casually. Uh, and then uh, as you stand, you know, like everyone knows, you hang out in those groups. Eventually, <clears throat> it progresses to others, other drugs. And uh, so I started experimenting with a lot of drugs and uh, found myself. <clears throat> excuse me, over the years, uh, just get, uh, getting involved in, in a lot of stuff and eventually ended up uh, finding out about cocaine back in the 70s. Uh, I'm sorry, my, I'm 67 years old, so I grew up in the 70s. And uh, so uh, drugs were kind of a, a thing back then. Everybody was doing it, so I got involved naturally and uh, uh, started to do that. Had a girlfriend, uh, which is now my wife. Uh, we've been together for uh, over 40 years now. Uh, but we do uh, had a rough time getting together. Uh, I met her uh, when I was 17. We began to date and got together. We moved in together. We have four children now. and. Uh, eight grandchildren. Uh, but uh, my wife uh, found God probably about seven years before I did. And uh, but we stood together. We tried to make it work uh, until finally it came to a point where I was really, really bad, uh, really caught up into the drug scene and uh, was doing a lot of big mistakes as far as, you know, not coming home and ending up with other people that I shouldn't have and so on and so forth. Uh, so we were going to get ready to split up at a time. And uh, she asked me to go to a marriage retreat as a last resort. Uh, naturally, I, I said, I'll go because I was up in the mountains. But I went as I wanted to go, you know, with my my stuff. And I... Uh, Went to these uh, retreat for a couple of days and it wasn't really working out for me. I, I didn't feel like anything was going to happen there. And I told my wife that, you know, I think this was the last shot. We were going to go ahead and and leave each other. And uh, we were married. Um, and I just told her that this was going to be it. Uh as I get ready to leave, it was a Saturday. We were going to be there till Sunday. Uh, she was upset. She went downstairs and shared with the other women that, you know, it wasn't going to work out. At that moment, one of the men came up to talk to me and asked me if uh, I was okay. And I said, you know, it's not going to work out. I'm going to go ahead and and leave and my wife and I are going to divorce and we're not going to, it's just not going to work out. And yeah, he was persistent. 
and saying, hey, you know, let's give God a chance and so on. And I said, no, I don't, I don't think it's for me. Uh, so he requested, he said, hey, you know, uh, before you leave the mountain, before you go down, I said, uh, he says, can I pray for you? I said, well, I really don't want to get into that. He says, all I want to do is pray that you go down safely, that everything works out okay for you. I said, okay, you know what? If that's going to make you feel better, let's go ahead and pray. So the minute he started praying for me, he laid his hands on my shoulders. And uh, I'll tell you what, the power of God just came upon me at that very moment. Uh, I fell to my knees. Uh, I just broke. Uh, you know, God just touched me in a way like I've never felt before. Um, at that very moment, I, I just hit the ground and started to just weep. Uh, my wife says I was on the floor for about three hours. I don't know how long it was, but I believe God was cleansing me because I was going through so much, uh, things in my mind of the past. And, and, um, and, and as I got up, you know, from the floor, I really just felt different. I knew there was a God. Uh, after all these years of hearing about him, uh, I knew that he touched my heart. And from that day forward, uh, I wanted to know what happened to me. So I got me a Bible. I said, I need a Bible. I need to read. I need to find out, you know, what, what went wrong, what went with, with me. And uh, God touched my heart in a way that uh, I started to really get interested in, in who he was. And I began to read a lot and seek his face. I learned that I had to pray and I had to ask for him to, to change my life. And, uh, you know, we, we got back together with my wife and, um, uh, we went down the mountain. We started to, to walk. I started to understand that I needed to go to church. I needed to be around Christians. I needed to be in a place where I could learn of God. And God was able to uh, speak to me and change me over the years. Like I said, I've been serving God now for probably about 35 years now. God called me into the ministry Back in 1990, I, uh, I started to uh, work at the church uh, as a usher, worked my way into uh, a director of a men's recovery home. Uh, then my wife and I opened up a women's home. Uh, so we had some experience there for a few years, probably about five years. Uh, and then I got called to go into the ministry as a minister. So uh, I was sent to seminary in Chicago, Bethany Seminary. Uh, did my schooling there, got ordained, came back to East Los Angeles and began my uh, ministry there, preaching and teaching and working with families and so on. And so God began able to... Uh, teach me some things about how to work with families and work with people. And my past has been a big uh, help for me because uh, I do minister to a lot of people in the streets. I know what they've been through and how they uh, struggle and how it is. It's hard to, uh, to make a change and to trust anybody or, or to really believe it's there, there's something different could happen. Um, uh, it's not until somebody begins to really care and minister to you and share the love of God with you that that God begins to open up that that hard heart. And um, so God has blessed me with the ability to go ahead and hit the streets. And I'm doing that now. I have a church in East Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, we've been going strong now uh, for about seven years. Uh, and uh, God has just been blessing us. Uh, tremendously we have a good group of people the people that I have on staff are people that came from the same background that I did so God has taught us to work together to get things going together so uh, uh, we're, we're growing and we're moving forward in a powerful way so it's going it's going really really great and I'm very very happy uh, my wife and I have really come to a point where we know that this is what God has called us to do and we're and we're doing it
you know, working together at it. Uh, she handles all the women's ministries and and handles all the uh, events that we have uh, in the area. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. So uh, coming to this point here, uh, meeting a lot of people in different ministries and and going to a lot of places to uh, minister myself. Uh, I joined a, a group that used to, uh, Bob McCallow has a, a group, uh, a prison ministry. He was a chaplain for, for the, for about 40 years. And, um, uh, I met him and started going to his support group and, uh, he has it once a month. And I began to meet a lot of ministers, a lot of pastors from different areas. And that's, that's where I met Pastor Mario. And uh, we began to talk and chat and get to know each other. And I invited him to preach at my church. And uh, he came down and shared some things. And and so, uh, you know, we, we're becoming uh, good friends. And uh, so I, I, I was surprised that he asked me to come and do this. This is my first time, time doing anything on Zoom. Uh, I'm usually a hands-on guy. I'm not really technical with a the phones and the computers, but you know, that's a whole different era. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm learning little by little. So I pray that I'm doing this right. I don't know. Uh, I can't hear anybody. So I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into this Bible study. Uh, it's going to be a short message. It's just something that I think uh, at this time, God really wants us to understand. Uh, as you know, the world is changing and things are going on with it around us that, uh, some we can control, some we can't, uh, as far as the world changing, uh, doesn't mean that we have to change along with it. Uh, we have a God that secures us, a God that takes care of us, uh, a God that, uh, will guide us and lead us in the right direction. And, that is basically where I'm going at uh, with this message today. Uh, we've been on a theme, uh, a lot of us here in in Los Angeles and the churches that I've been working with, that we've been wanting more of God uh, in 2024, uh, asking God to be more uh strengthening and uplifting us and the things that we do because of the the struggles that we might find ourselves in family wise uh ministry wise uh going into the streets we know that are a little bit more dangerous now and uh so we really need <clears throat> god to come in and strengthen us in in many many areas so as you notice on the flyer uh, he put down the uh, scriptures that I will be going through, and it's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 10 and 11, and that's basically where I'm going to end up, because I want to bring us to the point where we can grasp the understanding of what scripture is going to mean, and for a lot of us that have been called out of our darkness, and brought into his light, uh, it takes something from us that we need to really seek God and really ask God, uh, are we on the right path? Are we doing the right things? Am I learning the right things? And I'd like to start off today, if I can, with you in the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew. And I want to just read this one scripture for you. It's in the book of Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Uh, if you would go with me there, uh, hopefully you have your Bibles with you. And most people call these the, the B attitudes. And they're kind of common sense type of things. Blessed are those that, you know, that uh, are poor and they realize they need him for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. That's uh, the third chapter. But what I want to concentrate uh, on the verse 5 of chapter 5. Uh, excuse me, verse 6. I'm sorry. Chapter 5, verse 6. 
if you can go with me there, it reads like this. It says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice. They will be satisfied. In other words, they will be filled. They will be strengthened. They will be uplifted. And I believe at a time where we're at now, we have to have that hunger and thirst for the things of God. Because I believe those are the things that are going to strengthen us and uplift us to a point where we'll be able to deal with situations. Now, trials and, and situations will come. But we need God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be able to deal with them in a godly manner. We know the earthly way of dealing with things. Uh, we go on our own understanding. We kind of been through the streets. We've been up and down. So we know how to deal with those type of things. But we're dealing this in a spiritual manner because God is spirit. And he wants us to deal with these things in a correct manner that we're not going to fall into the worldly way of dealing with situations, but handle them in a godly manner. But we do need God's wisdom. We do need God's knowledge. And we do need God's understanding of how to deal with, with these things spiritually. And because it's it's a spiritual walk with God. Uh, naturally we're going to deal with the physical world. But that doesn't mean that we have to be, be conformed. To the ways of the world. Uh, on how they deal with situations. I believe God gives us strength in everything. The Bible says in Psalms 37. Uh, chapter 37. 4, it says delight yourself also. In the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, we normally think on a physical way that God's going to give us all the things that we need physically. You know, a house, a car, uh, you know, money, uh, you know, a good life, a uh, peaceful life. And that's and that's things that do God does come through with. But. I, I believe that God is speaking more on a way of a spiritual things that we're going to need, uh, that our heart will be satisfied uh, with the things that it desires uh, from the inside. Naturally, we desire God to be with us in everything that we do. We desire God to bless us, strengthen us, and uplift us. Now that we have a clear mind, <laughs> we can we can understand things. We can clearly see the directions that we're going in. But we also, we need God's wisdom uh, to be able to handle a situation in a godly manner. Uh, whether it be a family issue, a marriage issue, maybe an issue in the, with our job, or even in our church. Uh, there's things that, that we need to deal with in a godly manner. Uh, we, we, we have a brain, we have an understanding now, I believe. I know I do. Thank God. After I got cleaned up, uh, I'm able to think and to rationalize and to really uh, understand my situations or things that are before me before I react, before I move forward or before I make any decisions or, uh, you know, we before in the world, we used to make drastic decisions at the spur of a moment without thinking these out, without uh thinking of the consequences, and we would react. And then later on, we'd have to clean up our mess, uh, you know, try to fix things that we, we reacted on and, and try to backtrack. And, and we find ourselves doing that a lot if we work, if we do things in a godly manner, I mean, in a worldly manner. But God wants us to take things on with the wisdom of God with the understanding of God and, and seeing actually what situations we find ourselves. The Bible clearly states that, that if we see God, God will definitely always show us a way out. Uh, so we must put God first in every situation and seek his direction. Uh, sometimes it's not even a point of reacting to anything. Sometimes God says, just be still and allow me to, to work it out for you, uh, which sometimes for us is a hard thing to do. We like to react very quickly. Uh, 
Or sometimes we say, you know, God, I got this one. I, I'm going to do this one on my own. I can figure it out. And sometimes uh, we have to go back and say, well, God, I thought I had it. <laughs> um, but um, I believe that God wants us to really seek him in a manner that um, we want to be able to be in his will, doing the things that he's called us to do according to his purpose, and really lean on him uh, for the desires that we have now, which should change uh, from the things that we did in the world. Like I said before, a lot of times we wanted the physical things of this world. Now in my life, I find out that I need more spiritual things in my life, uh, more peace, more understanding, more calmness, uh, a way of speaking in a way that people can understand me and really be able to minister to people that that God placed in my life, uh, not only with my family, my children, uh, but people that I come in contact with at the church, uh, people that I meet out in the streets, uh, coming from the streets myself, I have to be able to, to use a, 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 a godly understanding, show love and compassion uh, in a way that people can respond, not to me, but to the gospel and to the love of God. And I believe that's very, very important for us to grasp that because we, we, when we minister to somebody or we share the gospel, it's for a purpose that they would come to an understanding of, the, of God and who he is. And that's what leads me into this scripture here where we, I wanted to end up with you. And that is in Isaiah 58. And if you go with me there, you'll see where God is leading us to and the purpose of us coming to him. He says this in Isaiah 58, uh, verse 10. He says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness. And the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. It's an honor and a blessing to know that God is working through us. But we also know that we need God's love, God's compassion, God's wisdom, God's knowledge to be able to do his ministry and do the things that he's called us to do. Uh, as a pastor, I realize that I have my own views, my own issues, but those have all passed away now. And I want to do things according to how God wants me to do it and work with people in a godly manner where he gets the glory for it. I mean, we used to be always looking for the pat on the back and, you know, it's all about me. And I realize now over the years that it's not about me anymore. Uh, it's about those that God has placed in front of me, those that are hurting, those that are lost, those that need to come to an understanding that God loves them and God wants to bless them in a way that they will have peace, they will have comfort and not naturally God will supply all their needs. And becoming a minister, as we read here, these are the things that God wants us to do so that the light that is in us can be shined in the darkness of this world. And it, the, for the purpose of touching others and bringing them to an understanding. But see, you and I, we need God to be in us. We need God to fill us before we can share with others. And this is what this scripture is saying, that we are going to be like a garden that God waters. And sometimes we're going to be dry or we're going to struggle. Or sometimes we're, we feel that you know we're in this by ourselves or uh, nobody's understanding, nobody's grasping. That's when we really need to lean upon God. Uh, in my ministry, I, I work with families, young couples, people in the street. Uh, you, you feel 
you pray that they can come and make a traumatic transformation, but we all know we all know that that doesn't happen all the time. So we have to continue to minister, continue to show love, and you know allow them to come to that point where we have come to. Uh, like I said, my wife got saved seven years before I did, and she continued to water that seed that was planted in me, continue to love me, encourage me, uh, hope that God would soon one day change my life. And it, she, and he did. So her work was not in vain. Uh, so I, I know in my heart that the time and the efforts that I put in people's lives, it's not in vain. It's a purpose that I'm going to share their God's love with them, share God's word with them, with the hope that they'll eventually come to the point of understanding and and finally give their life to Christ and, and, and grasp what God wants to do in their lives. So it's important that we stay plugged in with God. Uh, if you do any type of sharing or ministering in where you're at, you know that you need God's strength and courage to continue to keep going. So this scripture ministers to me in a way that that I know that God's going to fill me and God's going to strengthen me. And he's going to do it daily because I need God daily. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we're, we've we come from our past uh, of knowing that, well, you know, we go to church on Sunday and, and then I'm good. And then I'll go back, you know, next week. Walking with God over these years, I realize that it's not so. I need God every day. I need to be connected with him every day. I need to be praying with him every day, thanking him for another day, uh, being in his word every day, being in prayer every day, so that my mind and my heart would be ready to be used by him in any way. Uh, so I pray that this, this uh, understanding helps you and that you come to a point in your life where you have that hunger and that thirst for God, uh, that it stays within you because that God will fill you, the Bible says, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Hopefully they're godly desires that, that you want to be able to be a good minister, uh, a good mother, a good father, a good husband, a good wife, uh, a good friend. You know, we do have a lot of friends that uh, we come in contact with. Uh, and we want to be able to be a good a good person to them, um, a giving person. I, I, back in the day, I was not a giver. I was one that was always taking. But I've come to the understanding and I've learned of the scripture that it's better to give than to receive. I didn't understand it before, but now I do because I know that God will supply all my needs. So I trust in him and I believe in him. So I'm able to set my needs apart and do and help those that are in me in any way possible. And when you come to that understanding in your life, then you're able to see clearly that the purpose for you and I is to bring others into the light and get have them come to a knowledge uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that their journey will also be one of of blessings, of strength and courage, of love and compassion for those that, uh, that they come in contact with. So uh, this is just a short Bible study. Uh, I'm, I pray that you understand where I'm coming from with this uh, because it's something that we really do need uh, in, the, in these last days. I believe we're getting towards the last days and things are going to get a little bit more difficult. Uh, uh, here in, in uh, the United States, you know, we're going through a whole lot of changes as far as uh, our government is changing, uh, our laws are changing. It's getting a little bit difficult financially. Uh, our children are going through a lot of changes. Uh, like they on spiritually. I'm sorry, go ahead. Was somebody speaking? 
I, I think they unmuted by mistake. I don't think they were speaking to you. I think they just un briefly unmuted by mistake. So. Oh, okay. I can't see anyone, so I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, can you see me there okay? Um, so yes. I'm, I'm praying that this might be a help to you, those of you that are listening, uh, that they might get you in a point of understanding that we continue to seek God. Uh, Matthew 6.33 uh, comes alive when we understand this because it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And hopefully we're looking for the godly things, not just the physical things. Uh, God really does provide for us. Uh, since I gave my life to God, uh, God has always provided for me. He's always been there for me. Uh, in my times of struggle, last year I was uh, diagnosed with cancer uh, in my prostate. <clears throat> it was a difficult time for me. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I, I said, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you. If this is how it's all going to end, then so be it. But I'm going to continue to serve you. I'm going to continue to believe in you. And I didn't shut my church down. I kept on preaching, kept on teaching, uh, kept on going about my business for the things of God. I went to my radiation uh, procedures for two months. Uh, and this I've been doing this uh, checkup for the last two a year and a half. And God has delivered me from cancer. God has taken it away. Uh, I've been doing my blood test, and they say it, my numbers are going way low to a point where they're not even marking anymore as far as dealing with the cancer. So I'm blessed. I'm, I, I trusted God. I believed in God. God came through for me, and I said, thank you, Lord. I thank him every day because uh, he's given me more time to do his will. So uh, my family's happy. Uh, God is happy. Ha my wife is happy that uh, God's going to let me stick around a little bit longer. Hallelujah. So uh, I praise God. And uh, that just secures my faith more, strengthens me more. And like I say, when you feel dry, as we just read, that God will bring a spring of water and, and re rejuvenate us and break us up and, and give us strength. And this definitely did for me. I, I'm so happy. I'm so glorified. I'm so thankful for God for for giving me more time and helping me get through this. So, so I, I there's no doubt in my mind that if we seek God, uh, God will listen. He'll hear you, and He'll come and and He'll help you. So, that's that's the message I have for you today. I pray that you understand it in a way that I've come to understand it. That truly, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be there in your time of need. Uh, so just be hungry for the things of God. Be Ask God to help you and to teach you and to show you. I, I tell our congregation that we continue to pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of him and his word. And that will carry us through for the time that we have here. So I pray that you were blessed. I pray that God spoke to your heart in a way that you understand. I know that uh, Ruben, uh, I mean, uh, Pastor Mario said that uh, there's time for some questions. Uh, uh, I'd like to go ahead and take a few questions before I pray and ask God to be with us for the rest of, uh, well, for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so if there's any questions, uh, I'm free, free to answer any, if you might have any.